Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Education Matters, where everything we talk about is education. And we call it Education Matters because education is important, and it's all about education. So it's that a, a double entendre, if you will. And uh, if we talk about politics, which I don't get into, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the politics of education, sociology, sociology of education, uh, so it's everything is all about education. I'm Kojo Quote, I'm your host, and it's always a pleasure to welcome you to this conversation with an esteemed guest. And well, you'll get a chance to meet our esteemed guest in a, in a, in a, in a few minutes. But uh, before that, as we all know, what's next? The good old education box. We can't have this show without the education box. And as you know, or you may not know if you're seeing this show for the first time. I don't know where you've been hiding. <laughs> but if you, if you see this show for the first time, you're going to see the five items that I have in here which are symbolic of the importance of education. If you're seeing it again, then you've seen these items before, and you will see them again because that's how important education is, and I can't emphasize that enough. So in my education box... I have five items which are symbolic of the importance of education. And I know our guest today is fairly new to this area, so you probably haven't seen my box, have you? No, I have not. All right. Okay. So this will be new for my guest here. So in this box of five items which are symbolic of the importance of education, and the very first item I have in here is a bottle, a water bottle. I've got it sort of, um, I've got to reduce some of the stuff on here, but anyway. Says education is a cure for ignorance. Education is a cure for ignorance. And, and when once one uses the word ignorance or ignorant, it doesn't mean that a person, well, it simply means that a person lacks knowledge. How else can a person get knowledge but through education? And for us here in Monroe County, it's all about Monroe County Community College, the only post secondary educational institution here in the county. If you want to get rid of your ignorance if you want to get knowledge in any field whatsoever. Monroe County Community College will cure your ignorance. The second item I have in here is a medicine bottle. And it says that education is a cure for poverty. Education is a cure for poverty. And I can't think of any other way to cure poverty, surefire way. There are some other ways that one could cure one's poverty. You could rob a bank. <laughs> Don't try that at home. You could win the lottery. How many actually win the lottery, right? <laughs> you uh, could get involved in some illicit activities. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't try it at home, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. But get an education, and I guarantee you it will help cure your poverty. I remember my days of being poor in the ghettos of Baltimore, Maryland, but I knew if I get on those two or three buses to go to the northwest side of Baltimore, to Morgan State University, it would cure my poverty. So I did that, and eventually I was able to move out of that neighborhood, and it cured my poverty. My mom had a seventh grade education. My dad had a ninth grade education. Eventually he got a GED, set us on a trajectory to success for the family. But after I left home, I ended up being poor, eating spam and ramen noodles. Ooh. <laughs> no, ramen noodles are all right. Spam, I don't know about. I still eat ramen noodles. I don't know if I guess that's what everybody does, right? But that's all I could afford in those days. But anyway, a cure for poverty. Education is a cure for poverty. The third item I have in here is a key. And on here is the word success. It doesn't matter where you were born, how you were born, what your circumstances are. Get an education and you can open all kinds of doors. All doors can be opened with a good education. And I'm where I am today because of my education. My guest that you'll meet in a few minutes is where he is today because of his education. The key to success. The fourth item I have in here is a roadmap to a place that I have labeled prosperity. You can start anywhere on this map. Get an education, and I assure you, I assure you, 
that it will lead you to that place known as prosperity. And, and we can all think of some prosperous people. And those prosperous individuals are prosperous because of their education. It's because of education. And education, education can be formal and formal. It could be in the trades, it could be in the liberal arts. We offer all those opportunities at Monroe County Community College. So, there you have it, the fourth item, prosperity. And the final item, a ticket to the middle class. A ticket to the middle class. How does one get to the middle class? If you're in the lower class, you want to get to the middle class, get an education. I remember, as I said, being poor and wanting to get back in the middle class. I was born in the middle class, but I fell out when I left home. The education got me back where I am today, and I'm sure my guest, maybe middle or upper class, perhaps he's upper class, he'll tell you. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, is, it is that um, education that gives you that assurance that you will get to that middle class. So there you have it, ladies and gents, five items in the box. One, the cure for poverty. Two, the cure for ignorance. Three, that key to success. Four, the roadmap to prosperity. And the fifth item, the ticket to the middle class. Education box. I can't think of any other profession that can assure you of all of this. No other profession can assure you of that. And so, with that said, I have a professional educator here, and he could be some other things besides an educator also, he'll tell us about that. Uh, uh, but education is what he does, and it's, it's Dr. James LeDuc, yes. who is our new Dean of Humanities. Yes, and Social Sciences. And Social Sciences at our Monroe County Community College. So, James, is a James, is a Jim, is a Jimmy. I go by Jimmy. So. Jimmy. Yes. What does your mother call you when? Jimmy, <laughs> most of the time. When you're in trouble? Well, then it's probably James. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jimmy. Yes. You prefer to be called Jimmy. Yes. So, Jimmy LaDuke. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Jimmy LaDuke. So, LaDuke. That's French? It is. My dad is from Montreal originally. Oh, Montreal. Yeah. Have you been there? I have. I have. Still have yeah. some family in the area there. So. Really? Yes. yes All right. So. All right. Parlez-vous français? Well, rusty, but I can still <laughs> read it pretty well. So. All right. Very yes. good. Yes. All right. And, and, and so, Jimmy LeDuc, mm -hmm. and you are the Dean of Humanities and Social Sciences at our Monroe County Community College. And Jimmy, um, people, you, you, you're new. You're fairly new, but we're not sure when this will air, <laughs> so uh, uh, you're fairly new. You're uh, less than a couple of months in. Yes. You're fairly new to Monroe County Community yes. College, and at this time of speaking, you're less than, what, a month? Yeah, just a couple of months. Just a couple, a couple of months. months a couple of months in. You're a couple of months in here at Monroe County Community College. Before we get into the professional, though, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, the personal. Folks out there want to get to know sure. you better. Sure. Who is Jimmy? Well, I um, grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, although my parents, like I said, my dad is from Canada, and I was born in Boston and lived there for a while in the Boston area where my mom grew up. Um, and so, but ended up with my dad's job. We moved to Tennessee, and that, and as a child, I um, really discovered a passion for the performing arts, and I have a theater background, and so that's really, I started performing as a young child and kind of carried that through my, through my life and through my education, have a Bachelor of Arts in theater. Okay. Um, and then continued that on, went out and worked professionally as an actor and then moved into directing. Oh, you did work theater. as an actor. I did work as an actor and worked in regional theater in both Memphis and Atlanta and kind of diff several other cities as well. And, and then really moved from there. I really always wanted to direct and to teach and so that's really what I ended up moving into. Mm. Went back into school and got at first my Master of Fine Arts in Drama, focusing on directing theater. MFA. At MFA, and then went and moved after that to Minneapolis and lived there for 14 years and ended up working as a theater educator for a community college there and also at, did a lot of theater in the Twin Cities, um, mostly directing, some acting, and then um, worked at the college I was at previously also as their community-based learning coordinator. So worked with the community, bridging that gap between learning both um, in class and also within community for our students of all different areas and divisions of the college. Mm -hmm. So, but, and I have a real passion and completed over the last three years my doctorate of education, my EDD in leadership. So, leadership, all yes. right, excellent, yes. excellent. 
So you say you grew up in Memphis? I did. I grew up in uh, Memphis. How long were you in Memphis? A long time. So I was there from, we moved there when I was in the first grade, so it was a long time, and okay. then um, up through high school, and then went to undergraduate in Mississippi, and then I lived in Atlanta for a while, too, after that. So. Where did you go in Mississippi? Which? Uh, Millsaps College. Oh, small, I know Millsaps. Yes, yeah, yeah. Liberal Arts Millsaps. College there. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. I went to Mississippi State for oh, my yeah. doctorate. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've been up to Memphis a couple of, you know, driving up oh, through yeah. Tupelo. Oh, yes, yes. through yes, Tupelo yes, for from, sure. and going up to Memphis. Yes. Uh, Beale Street. Yes, yeah. yes. Not that I was hanging out <laughs> <laughs> with my feet. My, my, anyway, ten, <laughs> 10 feet off the Beale or whatever. Right, okay. right. Anyway, so interesting. Uh, and, and, and so then you lived in Minneapolis also. I did. I did. And now... The most exciting part of your That's life right. is you are here That's correct. in Monroe County. <laughs> that is correct. That's exciting, isn't it? It is, it is. I'm happy to yeah. be here. Yeah. So what prompted you to move from, mm -hmm. and you're coming from Minneapolis, right? I am coming from, I worked in St. Paul and then lived in yeah. Minneapolis. Okay, mm -hmm. Minneapolis, St. Paul, yes. Twin Cities. Twin Cities. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, I think the only time I've been, I've been through there a few times, but going through the airport, if you go to the airport, if yes. you land at an, at an airport in a town, a city, or a country, have you really been there? That's right. That's um, I don't think you have. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you've got to get in town, right? That's right. That's so right. I don't think I've been to Minneapolis. I've been to the airport. Yes. Uh, anyway, so what prompted you to move here? Well, I just was impressed with the college, and when I, you know, looking at, at I really wanted to move into I, the work that I had been doing previously with, even with teaching and then doing community-based learning, I had been very active in our, uh, um, working with our assessment and working with curriculum development. Okay. And so I have, and leadership, and I had a passion for that, and, and so it was, I was really, when I saw the position, and I was impressed with the school, and I came to visit, and so for me, it just felt like a, a really good thing, and I was excited about the opportunity. Excellent. Excellent. So... You're the Dean of Humanities and Social Sciences. As my three-year-old three will say, what does that mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, so he says, what are you talking about? Um, anyway, so <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, humanities, mm -hmm. for the audience out there, sure, for, sure. what is the humanities and what is, what is, um, so what are the social yeah, sciences? Sure. What areas, in sure. essence, what areas are, uh, sure. are covered? For, um, for the social sciences, you look really at the sociology, and that can cover a broad range. We also, um, and in the, in the humanities, we look at sociology between the two um, areas that I cover, anthropology, music, okay. Okay. theater, art, um, general humanities courses. Those include some film courses, obviously English, and so a lot of our English courses as well. Um, reading, um, literature courses as well, um, uh, political science, history. Okay. So we cover okay. quite a uh, quite a yeah. and a lot of courses that are um, courses that students take as well as they're going if they're going to continue on their education and transfer as well. Yeah. Speech I, as well and communication as well. Yeah, I went to a. Um, I went to, when I went to college, even though I was a an accounting major, it, uh, they emphasized the liberal arts. Mm -hmm. So. You got two courses yes. in humanities. Besides your English, your two courses in humanities. You got a couple of courses in philosophy. Philosophy is another area. You got we you got a couple of courses in, in history, Western mm -hmm. civilization, history before eighteen something <laughs> and after eighteen right, something, right. And, and 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 then the um, the the other courses, uh, other a bunch of other courses, music, <laughs> music, and, and and some African American studies and and. and other kinds of studies, uh, and so that was to make me a, they say, a well-rounded yes. individual, yeah. so I could answer some questions on Jeopardy. <laughs> That's right. Right, and I used to do very well on Jeopardy back in the day. You know, now I, I don't know, <laughs> questions have gotten harder or something. I don't know, but anyway, uh, so we think about Monroe County Community College, and we have the trades. Mm -hmm. Right, we have the 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 uh, what do you call those? The uh, non, the occupational. Mm -hmm. They call those o occupational areas, and then we have the non-occupational, which are your yes. liberal arts courses and all of that, and the gen ed. Yes. So the gen, gen ed, ed for the yes. most, some of that, except for the quantitatives and sciences, right. are in your area. Yeah, in my right? area, that's correct. Okay. So if I were to come to the college, what gen ed courses, for example, 
would I be required to take? And you know, you do the English? And sure, you would need to do English, um, and and so it kind of varies. And there's some electives as well that you would okay. take that you're required to take, and that could vary. So students can go. Um, we also do, of course, have the art transfer pathway. We have other transfer pathways okay. that we have okay. as well. So students could look at a lot of those other areas and ways that they might transfer for them to in their gen ed requirements. So. Um, there are some required courses, obviously, like you said, with English, sure. but students do have some freedom to in, in the areas they may want to pursue, and it gives a chance to really explore, again, like you said, the well-rounded liberal arts education, but also a chance to explore, hey, maybe I can look at some of these courses in their areas that I may want to continue my education mm. in mm. and further, or may help me in whatever area I go into. So, so essentially, if I'm a high school student or I'm over 25 and I want to get into Reconnect, which is free college education yeah. for those folks out there, anybody over 25 can come to Monroe County Community College and get free tuition at the college if you're 25 or over. So if, I, if, if I'm a student and I'm interested in Monroe County Community College, or maybe I'm interested, well, not initially in Monroe County Community College, I'm interested in going to U of M, mm -hmm. Harvard, Yale, MIT, University of Wisconsin, um, What's, what's in Memphis? Oh, University of Memphis? Or, University yeah, of Memphis yeah, or? Yep, or UT in Knoxville? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or a, 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 any of those. I can start at Monroe County Community College. Sure can, yes, and really, um, and, and the great, great thing about a lot of these core liberal arts courses that we're talking about and within the division, those are gonna transfer to these schools as well. So it gives you a really great core foundation that's gonna really lead you in to these other schools as well to if you want to continue on in your bachelor's degree and then maybe even further on from that. Yeah. So essentially I can start here and go anywhere. That is correct. That is correct. Boy, isn't that exciting. That's exciting. I can, I can start here at my rural county community college and I can go to U of M, any of the other institutions as many people do. Yeah. They start here. It sets, it sets them on a trajectory to success. And many of our students who start here and transfer to other institutions fare better at those institutions mm -hmm. than the native students. That's what they call the ones who start there as freshmen, than the native students. So our transfer students, when they go, fare better than many of the native students. And this has been shown. Community colleges give you that uh, background or that start that you need. And I've heard some high school. Uh, some high school counselors describe community colleges as two years of direction. Two years of direction. You start at a community college. If you have no clue what to do with your life, start at a community college and you will get direction as to where to go. And you have counselors, you have a writing exactly. program. You, 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 yep. it's the, the writing fellows program, is that under you? That is under me. So we okay. do have it. And so our students who've taken our English courses can be, or other courses can be recommended to be writing fellows and that helps work with our writing center which is part of us and, and so those students any student may come in for their classes and really get help to improve their writing and work on their assignments and so it's a great it's really an excellent resource for our students um, and it really improves because again as you said going on that gives you a set of skills that will serve you well throughout finishing your degree not just at Monroe County Community College but also going on further in education and also in the work world as well. Very good. So if I'm in a class uh, and I, I'm writing a paper, mm -hmm. for example, and I'm having some challenges with the paper, I can go to the writing center. Yep. You can set up an appointment and they'll work with you and these writing fellows and our staff will work with you and help you on that process and really guide you um, so that, again, you can keep improving your skills as well. Okay. And besides the writing, fellows, that's, a, that's different from tutoring. Yes, it's different than tutoring, but okay. yes. But it is specific in that writing center to really focus on working on those okay. papers as okay. well. Okay, so I can get help with my academics in a tutoring area. Yes, that's and correct. And that's, that's a different area from, that's not under you. Right, right. Right, right. That's um, under student success and Dr. Barron's. And then... I can get help also with my actual paper writing. Exactly. Uh, a challenge that many individuals have is with something called plagiarism. Yes, that's correct. And we don't like plagiarism at the college level. So the writing fellows can help, help me sort through that. Yes, that's correct. And they can right. really, again, work with you and really work with you on specific questions you may have. 
um, on that particular assignment. And one of them can be, a, you know, about plagiarism. So that could be. But it, it, they're really there as it's a really, like I said, an amazing resource for these students to really learn skills and keep improving. And also just to have another set of eyes that can really work with yeah. you as you're learning the research and writing process. Okay, very good. So why don't we talk a little bit about yeah. something that ties in with your background. Mm -hmm. So we also have a uh, music mm -hmm. program. You have a music background. Yes. We have music scholarships. And I think that I believe that one big music scholarship that we have is, is one that covers, I think if you get that scholarship, it covers everything. Right, right, right. right? And you, can, and you can be active within the band with scholarships or with our Agora Chorale as well. So okay. depending on whether you want to focus on your vocals or, or really want to or play an instrument and you know, be a part of the band, there are options there as well through both scholarships and through just participation. And the great thing is it's not only student-based, but it also encompasses the greater Monroe community. So for both of those. Oh, really? For the, the band? And, and for the chorale, so students can really connect with other people in the community, other musicians as well. Okay, okay, very good. And what about theater? So we if do, I'm a student, yep. I'm out there, I'm at Monroe High, Jefferson Airport, any of our high schools in the community, middle college, you name it, and I want to stay, I still want to be involved in theater. Mm -hmm. And I want to go off to some theater institution somewhere. Can I start here? You can. There are, we do offer some courses in theater, some basic courses in theater, okay. introduction to theater, sometimes performance classes as well. And there are productions, at least one production, sometimes more a year, that are done as well. So there are ways to stay involved and be involved and start your training in that process through us as well. Okay. Okay. So, and then there's the Little Theater, mm -hmm. which is a room that's been recently renovated. Yes, the uh, Holiday. The Holiday Theater. Doctor. John Holiday, right? Yeah. It's, it's named for him, and he's still he's still around. He retired from MCCC a few years ago. Yeah. The Little Theater mm -hmm. is a place in yeah. Yeah. a newly renovated Campbell Academic Center. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yes. So there's Little Theater where they yep. can practice and take classes, and then there's the Meyer Theater, then there's the Meyer which Theory. is the big one that the public tends to use. For sure. For sure. Okay. Very good. So, what about in your area, I don't think we've talked about art. We have an ex that's your area, yes, right? Yes, we have an extensive art collection. That's correct. And then we have the Images magazine that comes out, right? Right. I don't know if you, I mean, you knew. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, what a wonderful publication, the Images magazine. And then, what in terms of our art collection on campus? And tell tell me a little bit about if I, if I wanted to do art, if I'm interested mm -hmm. in art as a student. What can I do at MCCC? Well, we have a lot of art courses and students who are taking that as a transfer as well. So we offer courses in painting, watercoloring, art history, ceramics, drawing, illustration, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. And we do have one of the most extensive art collections and that is maintained, so that's spread around the campus. So it gives students, not only in the coursework, a way to really be exposed to artists. Um, it's an, at times we have visiting artists that come in as well. Um, and in the same way then through images, the students, you know, that is a literary magazine that focuses on art and then poetry and other creative writing. And so it's a way to really blend those creative skills and, and really showcase the work of the students as well who are really working on those creative and, and arts as well, whether it be in writing, whether it be in poetry, whether it be in, in all different kinds of art as well that it's displayed. So it really gives students a great way to explore the arts and if you are a visual artist of any medium you really have a chance to explore that in a lot of different courses and work you can do at the college. So do all these courses have to lead to a degree? No they don't in fact some many times within a some students want to come in and just take specific courses and really learn from that um, but also you have like I said electives depending on your program mm -hmm. and you may have options to take certain humanities or social science courses that fit those electives and so students often will opt well this may not be my major but I have a real passion for theater or music or art and so they take some of these classes as well. Very good. So you're, uh, there's also uh, I think uh, there's an art club Mm -hmm. Therese, Therese right. you're, you're a prof professor of uh, art there, manages, well, manages, has an art club right, right. where students are actually in this art club and they can involve, get involved in various community activities. One of the 
the activities that's ongoing in Monroe County currently is uh, murals are being painted uh, um, all over the city and so our art students can be involved yes, in that sure. also uh, as we paint these various murals around around the community and so excellent so there's the, the there's the theater there's the music there's the art there are the Jeanette courses yeah. that that one can take there there are there specific majors within your area is there are some more like in transfer ways that you can look at like I said okay, with pathways arts, pathways to lead to future things so there are and there's a variety of them and, and again um, art being one but there's other ways too so students can really look if they have a passion for the humanities or okay. the liberal arts they can really look at those as well and history is in your area yes also, that's correct right? and that is our, correct. Our history uh, with Ed LeClaire we yeah. work with the river raisin mm -hmm. Um, National Battlefield, uh, uh, covering the dealing with the War of 1812 and, and some of the what happened with uh, our Native American population um, as uh, prior to the War of 1812, and uh, and, and so there, there are opportunities also with a history program and involvement sure. in our community, in our community with the River Raisin and even internship opportunities, and we've had some grants to that that effect. So. You're new. We have a couple, a couple of minutes mm -hmm. um, to go. You're new. What are some of you know? What are some of your aspirations? What What are you thinking? Just briefly, where can we go with this? Can we do more work with the community theater? What What? I think that it's. I think keeping. I think right now, look what the great things that we're doing, and how can we expand and keep going in that direction? I think the performing arts are one way we can keep okay. growing, and the arts in general. I think what is great is that we are so connected to the community and I think that can keep growing and really show because we are such an integral part of the community and, I, and the community is so much a part of us and I think that's a great way we can keep moving forward for sure. Okay. So what would be an idea for you if you, uh, and, and uh, well, I think, of course, I, I, I was a dean, at three, a dean of business, not humanities at three different institutions. One of the things I did in my community was to actively recruit. Mm -hmm. So how can we get more students to come our way? I think, first of all, I think it's the model behavior of showing what we have to offer and really getting that word out. And I think the more we, the benefits are shown, the current students we have, that comes out and that is talked about. And I think the more we do these activities on the college campus and in the community that reach everybody, it's going to help us reach more and more people and showcase what we're doing and how, what a great place it is to come to Monroe County Community Excellent. College. More community involvement, and you, you're you going to be doing more of that yes, also sure. and getting involved in the community and, sure. and all sorts of things, right? So yes, sure. the future is bright. That's right. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Jimmy yes. the Duke, for being yes. on our show. Thank you. And audience, thank you very much for joining us today, and we will see you next time.